Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, thank you both uh, for taking time to speak to us. I want to play a bit of a game before we get into what we've got coming up in 2024. Um, you both have fantastic stables, right? Stables that you built up for years. Removing the heavyweights from both of your stables, if you could promote someone from his stable, you could promote someone from his stable, who are you taking? Cool, that's a good question. That is a good, I'm struggling with that one. I like, I like, uh, I like Nick Ball. Yeah. You know, very, very entertaining Scouse fighter. You know, I think he's going to get his shot soon at a big fight. And yeah, I, li I like watching Nick Ball. A little terror, isn't he? Beat Isaac Dogbo. Yeah. On yeah. That magnificent yeah, seven that was a great, that, that was a great yeah. win. I'm just trying or to Or Tyson Fury, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> heavyweights are out of it. Heavyweights are out of it. No stealing heavyweights from each other. No, what I, are you thinking, Frank? Well, I think... Bivol's there, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah Bivol yeah. and Berbersev. Yeah. yeah. Get that on. Took, took Bivol, one of the big ones yeah. as well. It shows how good... And look, obviously both stables can now work with each other, which is good as well. So again, fantastic stables. Um, what do you both make of what's going on in Riyadh? Uh, you guys have obviously put big fights on in the UK, stadium fights, you've gone out to America, put on big fights as well. What do you make of what's going on in Riyadh? Uh, for me, I, I likened it to like championship manager. You know, like if you're a mad fan, and you've just got the opportunity to just create really what you want <laughs> that's not possible in the real world. Mm. It's a little bit like that. I mean, you know, I've, I've done a couple of shows in Saudi, but the last one, you know, working with Frank and His Excellency, got the, ex got the ability and, and the experience to sit down with him in, you know, w which was a, such a unique, S honestly, I, I can't even explain surreal. it. Surreal. And, and Frank talks, <laughs> I just heard his previous interview about this guy being a boxing nut. Mm. I mean, on another level, you know. And this is not just okay guys, tell us what we should do. This is his vision. Mm. You know, the promos that you see, the fight cards that you see, the main events that you see, it's all coming from his direction. And I enjoyed it so much because, you know, there's a, there's a big screen up there and we're working on fights and box wrecks being, you know, punished and like, it's, it's, it's amazing. And you just cannot see these fights. If you look at the run that they've had, Fury against Ngannou, you know, the day of reckoning, Fury against Usyk, AJ against Ngannou. This is like in a four, four or five fights. Month, yeah, four, four fights. or five month period. Yeah, I mean, and people talk. One thing that I don't like is people say, "Oh, you know, it's taking boxing away from the UK and America." There's this thing. It's called the world, right? Mm. Just because like boxing doesn't have to just position itself in those countries. There's an opportunity to grow the sport in the region, but also we wouldn't be getting these fights without without His Excellency, without the collaboration, and it's amazing for boxing. Yeah, I think one it's, thing gone for it. So it's the early days of Vegas on speed. Because <laughs> when they opened up the casinos and they started putting these big uh, deals out there and, and you know, guarantee, putting big guarantees up to draw the big fights, that's what's happening here. And, it's, and, and they are big fights and they're great cars as we've just seen and two great ones coming up. And, it, and it's going to continue, there's no doubt about that. And it is good for British fans as well. Because the British fans will see the fights at prime time. Yeah. They're not going to have to sit up till 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. They're prime time, the fights. And that's great for Britain. And as I said to you in, you know, in our previous interview, you know, you look years ago, anybody who won a title went off, to the Ve went off to Vegas, went off to America. Even before Vegas, when it was New York, they'd go there and defend their titles and you wouldn't see them back here again, in, in the UK again. That wouldn't happen. We're... we're, we're we're basically back into that same era again. All these, all these top fighters will probably go there. But that's not going to stop fights happening in the UK. We've got big stables between us. We'll make fights happen. Hopefully we might make some between us now with our respective fighters against each other. But it's, it's great for the sport because you know what? The fights that the fans want to see are happening. Through His Excellency, through his vision, through the purse strings that they've got, they're making it happen. And we work hard to ensure that what's being discussed and what's being seen when we're looking at this big screen. We, I mean, uh, there's a, there's, I can't say who it is yet, but there was a fighter that came out of the blue. We were both sitting there. He mentioned this fighter and we both looked at it. We all looked around and scratching our heads and then the, the penny dropped who it was. But that tells you that what, he's, you know, how, what the detail is. He's not just watching all the big names. It's that the, he's in there, he's watching everything that takes place from around the world. Mm. You know, he's a complete boxing nut. You know, this is, this again, it's like, I keep using this phrase on speed. This is FIFA management on speed. That's what it is. It's crazy how both of you who've promoted so many good shows, big shows, 
and you can see the excitement that both of you have for what it's His happening. Excellency is doing. Things are happening. But we, if we could do these cards, we would do it because we're also <laughs> mad fight fans and we want to sit there and watch a brilliant night of boxing. Mm. But we also have this thing in, in our world, it's called a budget, <laughs> yeah. right? And when you're building a show, you're spending that much money on the main event. Normally, you're trying to put a good co-main on and you're trying to make this show work. Here, luckily, we're in a situation where, you know, and it's not a case of money is, is no object, because of course it has, to, it has to be sensible at the same time. But there's the ability to, oh, this one, what, how good would it be if we added this one and this one and this one? And it's part of the Riyadh season. The season itself is a cultural event, and boxing's become part of that now. So it's part of it, the season, so it's got to be successful. You know, nothing will be tolerated other than success, so it's got to be a successful event. And, you know, and, you know what Eddie's saying about us putting our shows on, we, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes to get fights on. And, and I've got to be honest, most people say, it's him or it's me stopping the fights right now. A lot of the reason it doesn't happen because of the fighters. And the fighters now are getting monies that we probably couldn't generate on our respective shows. So it's, that's making it happen. Is that a problem then going forward? For these no, fighters that have fought on these Riyadh shows, to then go, obviously their purses will be a bit bigger, right? Mm. To then go back to the UK shows, which I guess are a more realistic it, it, purse, it, well, is that difficult? Uh, it depends. I think if you're looking at the top echelons, the guys who fight on there, for example, you know, like Tyson or AJ and whatever, they're always... You know, they're always going to be in a big, big fight that's going to command a lot of money. It's the same thing about, as I mentioned earlier, about going to Vegas. It's the same thing. You know, what we don't have the luxury of back, back home is we don't have no casinos putting up money and we don't have the budgets to be able to do what we'd like to do in the UK, what they've got in, 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 the, in Saudi. Mm. But you've just got to keep working because at the end of the day, all these fighters, it's a fact of life, will either get beaten or retire. So you've got to get the next generation keep coming through. And that's what you've got to keep working on. So it's just, that's what will happen. They'll keep coming through. And it's, it's a great opportunity now for a young fighter. If he can show what he's, showed what he's all about, the skills that he's got and go and win a titles at a certain level, he can then jump into a serious, serious scenario. So for any young fighter out there now, you know, as I say, the world is his mm. lobster. I, I guess for fighters now, this will be a crazy change if it happens. It will be a case of... I don't want that fight in Vegas, I want that fight in Riyadh. And, which sounds crazy, but that could be what people are saying. Well, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, Riyadh as well, in Saudi, they're building, they are building, developing a couple of new cities. And yeah. I know from what I understand, one of those is going to be focused solely on entertainment. So, you know, that's going to be a destination for all sports, all entertainments, and one of those sports obviously will be boxing. Both of your superstars, right, Fury and AJ, have fought here. AJ takes on Ngannou. Next, it should have been Wilder. We all hoped and anticipated it would be Wilder. What do you make of AJ in Garner? We know what you thought of Fury in Garner, let's be honest. Yeah, you no, make of I got, AJ it, got it terribly wrong. We you all know, did. I like to hold my hands up. and I, 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 just, I didn't buy into the fact that someone can stroll into the sport on his professional debut <laughs> and compete with the lineal world heavyweight champion. It's unheard of, but he did it. You know, was it Fury was not on the ball? Was it... And Garnu was excellent. Well, I don't know what it was, but what we saw was a fight that could have gone either way. It was a combination. Yeah. I mean, you had a guy who's the top, the best of what he does at UFC. Undefeated as a heavyweight at UFC, can punch. You know he's going to be a handful. You know, if, he's not, if, he gets, if you're inside of him, MMA fighters, that's their game, isn't it? Getting hold of each other, pulling each other around. So you've got somebody who can mess about inside. They're not going to be able to do that with him. And... We, as I say, he could bang, and he showed that with Tyson <laughs> when he caught him, caught him on the head. But what surprised me more than anything was that he could box. And I think the, the good thing for now, AJ, that he's actually in a situation where he's got, uh, he's got the footage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, good and bad, because he's got the footage. <laughs> yeah, but you but don't. this guy, what, what I like about Ngannou is mentally super strong. Yeah. Like he believes he can beat all these people. And will he come on after that fight? Of course, of course you must. Because if, I mean, I'm sure he believed in himself before the Fury fight. But now he has to believe in himself. He's looking at it thinking, oh, I should have won that fight. You know, I dropped him or I could have done this. I could have done that. Now I'm fighting a guy that's supposed to be not as good as Tyson Fury. I'm going to run through this guy. And we said before off camera, the first time AJ has boxed anyone that is physically hmm. bigger than him. I'm not talking about 
If, if he catches him, mass. if he catches him, he can knock him out. Oh, that's, thanks, a fact, <laughs> that's, that's a fact. That's a fact. He's a banger. It, it's gonna. This fight. This fight. You know, as I, as I said, I look at it. It's, it's, it's pure jeopardy for AJ. This fight with this guy. You know, it's a tough, tough fight. Here, come to fight the guy, and he knows himself. If he if he can beat AJ, I mean, he's flying, isn't he? He's yeah. just put what he's put the linear champion on the floor and giving him probably his toughest fight he's had for a while, even though I believe it's t it was an off night for Tyson. But he's done that, and if he was to beat AJ, I mean, he's probably the best heavyweight in the world. Where is he? It's not, it's not a bad he? couple of days. You know, your yeah. debut's against Tyson yeah. Fury and your second fight's against AJ. I mean, it's worked it's not... out well for him. Where is he in Ghana? I mean, you've obviously, you've, you've both looked at and managed area champions or promoted area champions, British champions, English champions. Mm -hmm. I, I, still, I still believe that this guy can get beat at any level, mm. but he can also win at any level. He's, he's a dangerous guy with a very strong mindset. You know, I mean, you know, can Fabio Wardley beat him? Can Johnny, Fa I mean, you just don't know. The guy's had one fight, but what he's shown is, he's an unbelievable handful and he can really punch and he will let his hands go when you throw. Mm. And that's always dangerous. You saw that in the Andy Ruiz fight. Someone that is prepared and has, you know, has got that about them to stand and trade, especially on the inside, like Frank said. That's a, and that's why uh, when Fury got dropped, he was throwing with him. I'll tell you, and they've done their homework. His team done their homework against, you know, with Tyson. I noticed that. And as I say, with the way he shapes up, as soon as he shapes up, you knew, you knew that there was going to be a problem. And I think he's got good people around him. Mm. And they're smart people. But you know what? It's going to be a great fight. Oh, it's, it will gonna be, be it's gonna be exciting. Mm. And it's gonna be one of them as well where you I mean, there's been so many upsets. You know, Joe Joyce was gonna beat Zhang. Zhang done a job on him. You know, Wilder was gonna was gonna walk through mm. yeah, Parker. Uh, Parker. Didn't happen. There's been so many upsets. Mac Moodle. Yeah, all of them. You keep, keep looking at it all. So many. Are these big guys get in the ring? They throw bombs. One of them lands, it's all over. Indeed it is. Um, this probably is a question for promoters on the other side of the pond, but I'm going to chuck it to you guys as well. Obviously, we've seen a lot of the top European talent come to Riyadh. We've seen some American fighters as well, Wilder, Jarrell Miller. Do you think we're going to see the likes of Javante Davis, Shakur Stevenson, Canelo potentially come over to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, yeah. the kingdom and fight? I think they will. Yeah? Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's, you know... It has for them, to be, it's about money. Yeah. And it has to be a business all round at some point, but also the ability. I think one thing that's making these fights happen so much better is you've got a guy in the middle. If you look at Bivo against Betterbeev, if we were going to make that fight now, it would mean me and Bob would have to sit down and try and make a fight. The fighters would want numbers that, that aren't reasonable in terms of the commercial draw it could generate in Vegas or wherever that is. Now you've got a guy that does deals with both sides individually. So Bivol's done. Mm. Now he's got to go and deal with, with Bob. Done. And, and, done and, and that's that's so much easier actually to do rather than, you know. And, and Bob, Bob, I spoke to Bob, that's, that's a no-brainer. Mm. No that's done. Yeah. That'd be done, that fight. Fantastic. Could we get a situation where His Excellency comes to the UK and almost forces you guys to put on shows together in the UK? Well, we I want to yeah. put my guys against his we're guys. Yeah, yeah. I want to. We want to. Give me a guy against his guy. Like we talking no, about. I think. I think. I think we was to get some of our fighters, and mm. we should do it. Sit down, look at them, and maybe do something. That'd be a great idea. But we've got so many at, at various different levels. Yeah. So world championships, and even we're talking already. You know, to to Queensbury and Frank and George. You know, down for British title levels. You know, Nathaniel Collins against Hopi Price. Oh. Um, Shabazz Masood against Liam Davies. The, and these are sort of the opening fights of yeah. a potential barnstormer card. So mm. it was actually His Excellency that mentioned yeah. it. He said, we should do you, you two you going too. at it, you know. Yeah. And we can do that in Saudi or in the UK. Actually, I, th I think you will see that. Or do it both. Yeah, or maybe a little reality <laughs> TV series as well. You know, Hosted by Adi Oladipo. You know. Don't mind it. He don't has to move to Essex, I have to move to Hartford <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Oh, I don't know about that. You're going to be strong now. <laughs> Uh, final one, again, just to, to clear the, the minds of UK fight fans back home, it doesn't mean big fights aren't going back no. to Wembley or the Tottenham no, Hotspur Stadium or O2 Arena. We are going to get those shows we got, sometime we got in keep doing what we do. We've got, we've got our respective TV companies we've got to deliver shows for, mm. and that will happen, continue to happen. I think more pressure than ever to do that, actually, yeah. to prove to people that, you know, this is a, it's our home. This is our primary market for both of us. So 
I, I want to try and see three or four big arena fights or stadium fights solidified. Um, but of course, this is a big opportunity for boxing and our fighters. I mean, mm. We can't d disregard that either. I was going to ask you what your fight is that you're looking forward to the most. I feel like I know the answer, Fury Usyk in 2024. Yeah, that's, that's... Yourself? What forward fight are you looking forward to? Um, you know, I, I, I think for me, I might be a bit of a quirky vision, but I believe if AJ knocks out Ngannou and Tyson Fury deals with Alexander Usyk... Then we have the biggest heavyweight you know, fight You ever. talk about His Excellency being a fight fan. I mean, he would have the opportunity. And I know there's other contracts and rematches and all that, but let's well, be every, honest, every, I mean, every, you know. Uh, that's the fight we'd all like to see in Britain, that's for sure. It's the one. Yeah. yeah. And it's Saudi. Let's, yeah. let's deal with... Uh, Still with the big and Gardu man yeah, first. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's the thing. At the end of the day, there's, there's going to be a few bumps in the road on the way these for, for all of them. There's no doubt about that. Fingers crossed there aren't. Frank, thank you very much. Pleasure. Eddie, thank you very much as well. Cheers, guys. Thank you.